If you want to learn DAX, this particular channel will definitely help you. Today I'm going to show you the difference between this particular age and as well this particular age at the last transaction. Okay, let's find out what the difference are. As you can see, we have two tables here, the customer table and the transaction table. So going over to table view, we're going to have the same exact table right here. Let's just click on the customer table. Then let us right click over here and create a new column. So we're going to do what majority of people know and understand. Very simple, but it's the wrong way to calculate the customer age if you have this particular column called birth day or date of birth, wherever it is. Okay. So now we're going to do here uh, age. So age equals date diff. The date diff will actually find the difference between two dates, which is our date of birth of our customer and today. So date of birth, so comma today, and that comma again, we want it by year. This is what majority of persons know how to do. And I had been a victim of this as well, calculating my customer age like this. This is absolutely wrong. Don't do this. So take for instance, this particular customer here is actually 30. What if this customer made his or her last purchase in the last 10 years? That means when the customer last purchased, the customer was 20. Right now we're calculating after 10 years. So 25 right now, hmm, this is giving us 30. That is not cool. So what do we do? We have to first of all look at how to return the last transaction date of our customer. That will definitely help us to actually have this created. So let me show you. Right click, now new color. So over here, let us do this to be customer last seen equals. So for the customer last seen here, we want to return the last time the customer had purchased from us. We don't care all his other transactional history with us. We only cared about the last time the customer stepped into our store. So now what we can do is to use the calculate function. With the calculate function here, we can use the max function as well and go over to the um, transaction date over here, which means what we are trying to do is to return the max date from the transactional table. So putting the comma right now, we can use the filter function. So while the filter function, the filter function, we check if there is a matching you know, um, ID between the customer ID inside our transactional table and the customer ID inside the customer table that we are. So now the filter function is looking for a table, which is this one here. So provide it with transactional table. So comma, now over here, we're going to say inside the transactional table, we have customer ID, which is this particular one. Is it is it equals to the customer ID we have in the customer table? If yes, then go ahead and return the customer last transaction date for me. So we have just gotten that done. To make it easy for you to look at, go over here and shut date. Now you can see the last time the customer was seen was in 2024, which means the customer should be 28 years, not 29 years, if I'm not mistaken. This customer that is 34 should be 33 years. So what we have 30, should be that should be 29 years so it's easy let us quickly find out if that is true so what can we do to actually have this calculated so i might want to keep this particular column like this and add a new column to get it done so right click and new column so let's say age at last transaction so here so what I'm going to do now is to quickly create a variable to make it easy for me. So I'm going to call this one variable underscore date of birth. So you can leave a comment here to tell people what DOB is all about, specifically to those of 
you know your team member i will not know what it's all about so let's just say uh, d o b is date of birth yeah okay how do we get this done right now quickly we have to say okay we want to store in here the date of birth so which is going to be equals date of birth so after this right now we want to create another one and the variable should be called last transaction date which is going to be last transaction date so leave a comment to say our uh, ltd is last transaction date so we come on it here and we say equals so what's going to happen here is for we to actually use um use the calculate function but the calculate function now right now we can use the max function just like the previous one and the max function should actually give us transaction you know date date uh transaction date from the transaction table so close comma over here we filter just like the previous one so the filter request for table here we go our transaction table and over here we're gonna say the transaction here has an id of our customers so if it equals to our customer id here if that is true then close for filter close for calculate that's exactly what we want so wait a minute this is not completed yet so we have to calculate the difference between our date of birth and our last transaction date so we have to do return over here on the return we just have to do date diff so with the date diff right now we just want to find the difference between date of birth and was and last transaction date so we do that by year over here so once we close we hit the enter key this is it okay just like what i've said earlier let us go ahead and take a look at what we have done so if you look at it right now as of the last time the transaction happened between uh, the company and the customer the customer was 28 not 29. for where we have the customer to be 31 the customer was actually 30 not 31. for where we have the customer to be 40 here the customer was uh, 41 here the customer was 40 right in here as of the last time the customer last purchased from us so can you see this now which means what we are doing here what we are doing here is actually you know taking this particular uh customer date of birth which is this particular date of birth here of our customer right in here then we find the difference between the customer last seen and it will return this for us instead of us doing it based on the today function we have actually used right here there are lots of ways to actually have this done i'm going to show you another second way to have this done so whichever one you prefer you can choose it and try to remember it is our choice okay on this particular one is going to be very simple as well what we're going to do right here is for we to use a function called related table so let me quickly do this for you so h of customers okay so here we go we're going to create a variable here so variable we'll call it underscore underscore last transaction date equals so what we're going to do over here is to use the calculate function that's like what we have done before max so i think here is going to be transaction date so we close then right on this one we do not need to use the filter function we just go ahead and use the related function after our comma right here related table not related function table then this is going to be for what for our transaction so we close and once we have closed it we just have to go ahead and close our calculate function here then we have done that then we can actually return over here with the return we just have to do date div so with the date div here we have to actually say um 
dates of birth of our customer. We find the difference with what? With our customer last you know, transaction date. So do that by the year. So over here, so we go ahead and close. So if I hit my enter key, it will still give me the same thing that this particular customer at last transaction gave us. Can you see it now? To play, to, to some kind of um, to some kind of simplify this, you can actually cut this one away from here. Control X and push it into a variable. So variable here will be underscore dates of birth. So equals, then you paste this over here and use the variable inside here, underscore date of birth. So if I hit my enter, there should be no difference from what I actually have before. So I'm gonna show you another last way to actually have this done. So choose whichever one pleases you. It's all a choice. So this one here, we call it H2. Name it whatever you want. Okay, so let us start with a variable. We store in here our customer. Customer ID. So which is equals to customer ID from a customer table, right? Shift, enter. So we create another variable here. This variable here should actually be date of birth, underscore date of birth. So equals, so date of birth. So now we create another variable, which is gonna be underscore last scene. Okay, so for last scene, we choose to use the same format, max over here. Inside the max, we actually use the transaction date here, right? So with this, we can actually use the, I'll uh, just go ahead and close, put a comma, and under here, we're gonna just do customer ID, or just type in transaction, then we choose the customer ID over here. So find out if it is equals to underscore customer ID, which is the one we stored inside this particular variable. So if that is true right now, go ahead and close this one. Then we can quickly go ahead and return this. And over here, we just have to do date diff. So the date diff now should actually be underscore date of birth over here, comma, underscore last scene, comma, and uh, we do what? We do based on year. So if I just go ahead and hit my enter key, we should have the same exact thing. Okay, can you see now? So let's see, let's see, is there any challenges we are having? So we have just 28 here and we have blanks everywhere. Let's find out what the problem might be. So can somebody spot what the problem is right now? I think the problem is actually Within, within here. So who can actually spot what the problem is? Okay, let me help you. This particular part here shouldn't actually be what? Shouldn't be transaction ID. It should actually be customer ID, you know, or something like this, that is not living in the customer table, but the one living in the transactional table. Let's find out if that is true. So go ahead and remove this particular one from here and choose to use the customer ID, then once I hit my enter key, here will be updated automatically. Can you see it right now? This is something very simple. So practice this particular three different ways to calculate your transactional uh, date, uh, age of, of your customer based on the last transactional date. There are lots of calculations that you might be making huge mistake of, you know, as a learner. I'm gonna teach you every single thing, even though if you want to learn from Excel to Power BI, I have a course that actually covers that. Check the link on the description of this particular video or go through this comment section. I'm gonna have it right there for you. So see you in the class in case you want to join me to learn DAX as a beginner to an advanced level. So you're welcome.